uh, as Maggie mentioned, I'm currently an engineering manager at Monte Carlo building data observability. Uh, before that, I was an engineering manager at Tableau, as well as at Greenplum, a, a distributed Postgres database. So I've uh, been working with data engineers and, and data products for, for a while now and, and excited to share uh, what I do as, as practical steps uh, to keep my, my team energized uh, as well as functioning uh, towards, towards the best goals possible. Um, for, for a playbook, um, uh, what I'd recommend, these are, these are three hot take uh, types of topics I want to touch on today. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, check your pebbles. Um, and we'll go into the pebbles and rocks metaphor and, and how that uh, applies to data teams. Uh, say what you mean. Uh, be forthright with your teams. Uh, and find your want. As a leader, know what inspires you and share that inspiration with, with your team. Um, but, but first of all, data teams are not like other teams that you might need to be a leader for um, uh, or, or, or want to inspire. Um, data teams are often invisible, right? They're, they're part of the infrastructure uh, supporting your company's broader goals until they're not. <laughs> until, until the data team uh, causes a bug, there's a bad number in the, in the investor report, or there's a decision made and the data's not flowing, you need to get it right. So you're dealing with a team that feels unloved, but, but you're trying to give them the love and be ready for when you're on the hot seat. Um, you've got a lot of tech debt, uh, especially if you sort of walk into an existing platform, but even as you're evolving and adopting new technologies, there's different parts of your data pipeline that are built in different ways. And, and you can't get away from that. Even if you imagine, in your best possible case, that you could level set on a perfect platform, you'll still have tech debt, you'll still have maintenance. Um, and, and the people on your team, they've got many different skills and roles. I, I'm sure you probably have job categories like data engineer or analyst or, or things like that. But you've got people who have been engineers in a previous life. You've got people who have worked on the business side in, in a previous life. You've got people who have led a team and used analytics so much when they're leading the team that they actually want data to be their day job. So, even if you've got a team that's all one, one type of role, you want to think about the individual skills on your teams. So, uh, First, I'd like to dive into uh, checking your pebbles. Um, who here has heard of the pebbles, rocks, sand metaphor? Um, <clears throat> the idea is, uh, when you think about all the priorities of how you might spend your time in a given week or month or quarter, you could fill up with the sand. You could fill up with the small tasks, the fix-its, the ad hoc requests. Um, but then as you add in the bigger priorities that are of strategic importance to your company and your team, uh, you end up with not enough space. And so as the metaphor goes, um, first, first priority as a team leader is to prioritize the rocks. If you don't find a way for your team to focus on the rocks, You'll end up with not enough time for, for, for everything to fit. And then your boss and your boss's boss will be like, what, what did you accomplish? What, what did you get done? Um, so rocks that you might have on your team are replatforming to a new warehouse, retiring some legacy things. Maybe you're saving costs. Maybe it's going to be faster. You've got a big initiative. Someone's sponsoring that, that you're going to switch. Uh, you could be installing new catalog, new semantic layer, getting this richer, modern approach to understanding data and sharing with the teams around. You could be adding streaming. You could be trying to make things faster in real time. Uh, you could have quality initiative. Oh, we had this issue last quarter, this quarter. We got to make quality better. Um, or, or you could be trying to build data products, building something that actually touches your customer. All of these would be rocks. You could put them on your roadmap. You could tell the rest of the company, you could tell your stakeholders, this is what we're prioritizing. And to fulfill sort of the metaphor of rocks-based planning, let's say you've got a team of six people, how do you get two or three people working on a rock in a given quarter? The, the ad hoc requests will keep coming. You just have to tell those people on your team, this is your focus. It's high priority. I'm labeling it high priority. Certainly there are ad hoc requests that seem high priority, but this is what I do in, in my linear sort of task tracking board. If it is aligned with a priority for the quarter, I just mark it high priority and I tell folks, this is your priority. I'll interrupt you later if something comes up, but uh, we're starting with the baseline of the rocks are high priority. 
However, uh, when it comes to thinking about performance management and thinking about energizing your engineers, a, a, lot, is, a lot is missing if you only focus on the rocks. You're, you're missing whether your customers and stakeholders are satisfied. They are the people who are using what you built in previous quarters. You have to keep them happy. And, and if you've got some quantitative way of measuring happiness, that's great. Um, but you also just want to stay in touch with them. That's why we do ad hoc requests. That's why we talk with our customers. They tell us to build something and, uh, and we build it. Um, the other thing to focus on is how efficiently your engineers can deliver. Um, this is never going to be slated in a roadmap. I tell my boss, well, we're going we're gonna to ship faster and uh, we, won't, we won't have uh, outages in the data pipeline if we uh, do this. And he's like, I, I, I can't prioritize that. That's your job. So as, as an engineering leader, as a frontline person, whether a tech lead for a team or, or, or a manager, uh, you want to make sure that your engineers can deliver efficiently. Um, and then as you're doing the ad hoc requests, this is a professionalism skill that I try to teach all of my engineers. As you're doing ad hoc requests, it's your responsibility to leave notes, leave impact for the next time it comes up. I can't schedule a retro for every single thing that comes up. I can't find the generalized platform uh, architecture components for every specific paper cut that keeps getting us. Um, you need to empower each person on the team to think about what they want to take from the pebbles and the sand that they do take on over the course of a week or a month or a quarter um, and turn that into reusable stuff. So there's a lot of important valuable work that an analyst on your team or an engineer on your team might be doing that would be categorized as pebbles or sand and, and you want to find a way to honor that. Um, so you know uh, like basic, basic management would be make sure you handle the ad hoc requests, make sure you have an intake process, make sure you triage things. Um, you know, management 101 is make sure you prioritize the big rocks. Talk with your data PM, talk with your stakeholders, know what the roadmap is, prioritize the big rocks. Okay, got on those. More advanced, find a way to make the rocks smaller. As a leader, when we take on these big projects, whether it's replatforming, whether it's a quality initiative, it feels really imposing. And the most valuable thing you can do for the individuals on your team is breaking it down. Um, when the rocks are smaller, you can deliver in smaller increments of value. Uh, we've got a value of ship and iterate. Um, that's, that's amazing. If you can make the rocks smaller, that's great. And then the global thing to do as an engineering leader is just make sure that your engineers are autonomous, they're making improvements as they go. They can balance the rocks versus the pebbles themselves. Um, so this is, this is sort of the framework uh, that I would, I would say when looking at performance management. You're at the end of the year, or the end of the quarter, and let's say you work at a big company that has promotion packets. You're like, oh, well, this, this person on my team is super critical. I love this person. Are they really a superstar? And are we gonna are we gonna promote them? And I want to emphasize that Pebbles people can succeed uh, in the data space as well as Rocks people. Um, let's talk about Pebbles superstars. You ever thought about that? Like Flintstones, Pebbles superstars? Um, whoa. Okay. Um, a Pebbles superstar is someone who knows what the rocks are for your team and is with you in making those rocks smaller. They find a way to get a hack, but a hack that's actually deployed. They find a way to find, like they see four or five pebbles and sand and ad hoc requests keep coming up and, and they make it look easy. Um, a, a good person on your team would be someone who just handles tons of pebbles. That's really valuable. <laughs> you need someone who's like tackling a lot of stuff. I don't know if they're going to get promoted. Maybe they're going to get a raise. Maybe they're going to get a bonus. I don't know. But um, you know, you want to steer them. Can they automate more? But but this is person that you really like on your team. And and the trap is someone who takes on the pebbles, but tells you that they're going to work on the rocks, and then they're missing commitments. So um, I also want to 
say that the bar should be really high for rock superstars. Again, thinking from the perspective of a promotion packet, sure, you've got the shiny box. I migrated us to Snowflake. Oh, okay. Um, did that person actually own the problem end to end? A superstar engineer knows what design architecture was, all the way to like finalizing definition of done, finishing it off. Um, a, a solid performer on your team that's focused on rocks, they would, they would have some ownership. They'd be collaborating with the other people and so on and so forth. Um, and, and a lot of you know, architects are like the, the trap you fall into would be starting and researching hefty projects but not finding a way to get them going and, and actually delivered. So coaching folks to sort of keep the scope smaller uh, is, is, is big all across. Uh, I'm going to switch over. Uh, so overall, um, there's a way to honor the folks that work on the small stuff as well as the big stuff. Let's talk about leadership and saying what you mean. Um, so who here is a data product manager? Just raise your hand. This is, this is a role that's coming up. Okay, we've got a few. There's not enough. There are not enough data product managers in the world. Um, as a leader uh, on a data team, on an analytics team, uh, there's, there's a chance for you to just say what you mean and say what needs to be built. And maybe the PM will have some vision for you. Maybe the PM will know. Um, but uh, whether you're a technical expert, Tell folks how to build it. Just, just say, this is what needs to get built. I would build it myself. I could ask ChatGPT to build it for me. It might get it wrong. I don't know. Just say, just say how to build it. Um, if you're an analyst, if you're a leader of an analytics team, say what matters. You, you're the voice of the stakeholder. You're the voice of the customer. Uh, and maybe there's an analytics PM. Maybe there isn't. You know, um, if, you're, if you're working with data in the line of business, Think about what decisions are crucial. Uh, imagine that you're with a marketing team, you're embedded in a marketing team, you're embedded in a sales team. Are they deciding what mix of investments to make? Are they deciding uh, ground level, like who to target? What are the key decisions? And, and base everything off of that. Frame the work that you would do for, for that line of business based on that. Uh, if you are a data PM, think about what's going to be durable and, and reusable. Um, if, you're, if you're more of just a pure people manager, say how things could be better. I, I think uh, that's something I always feel shy about, sort of saying, well, this kind of worked, but it could be better. And you hear that tone in my voice? I, I sort of, I'm, I try to morph it in my head and it comes out differently if I'm slacking someone versus talking in person. Um, but point out what could be better. If you're holding a retrospective meeting after a pipeline broke and the data wasn't flowing, let people talk, let people brainstorm what could have been better, think about the root cause, okay, and come in and say, well, no, this, this really is, is what needs to happen. Um, and, and let's say you're a data person who's like on site with a customer, you're kind of in field or solution. It's your job to be advocating what's the right tool for the job, how is this going to fit, uh, and, and just having them give it a try. Uh, a lot of times are practical applications of data engineering and, and analytics. You don't know till you try it, and you just have to get them over the hump. Let's give it a try. Let's go for it. Um, so for all these roles, there's a way to act a little bit like a PM and just say what you mean, say what needs to be built. Um, you know, what, what's in a framework? Why would we use a, a framework to sort of construct our team's definition uh, of what we're chasing down. This is, this is how you communicate and justify to the team. We're investing in certain things this, this month, this week. Um, I, so many frameworks. Uh, I'm going to pull up an example, one from, from when I worked at Salesforce. Um, but it's your chance to impersonate your PM uh, in talking at many different layers of granularity about why data matters and what you're going to be investing in at the company. So. Um, from, from when I was at Salesforce, uh, we started using this framework called V2Mom, and it was intimidating. A lot of folks like saw this and they're like, 
I'm just going to use what my boss said. My boss has to write one of these. And so whatever my boss's priorities are, that's the priorities for my team. Uh, and I thought about it differently. I thought that this is your chance to say, what is different about your particular data team than the overall data organization? Or what's particular about your embedded situation? You're embedded with a certain team. They care about the data for a certain reason. Um, so uh, I, was, uh, I was working on the natural language team at Tableau Salesforce, uh, generating queries and visualizations. And, and so our vision was to use NLP to gen generate analytics. That was, that was a different approach. That was a fundamentally different approach than the rest of the teams at Tableau that were trying to build charts and dashboards in the system that way. Um, you set your values because you want tiebreakers when, the, when the, the team is in doubt. Oh, should we, should we pick up this ad hoc request? Should we tell a different team that, that this is something we should do? If we're having conflict about two different architectural proposals, how do we pick? Um, you want to move fast. You want to focus on your first customer. That was an example from our, our values. Uh, but you could say, we care about quality more than moving fast. You could say, I care about our existing customer base rather than our first customer. Um, the methods are where you just get to do that say what you mean exercise of what's the roadmap. What are you going to build? Uh, obstacles. Think of this as a mega stand-up. So, so you do stand-up, probably a lot of folks do stand-up with teams. Okay, what are you working on? What did you do yesterday? What are you blocked on? Well, guess what? At a leadership level, we also need a stand-up sometimes. <laughs> Uh, and so this obstacle section calls out to the like, what are you blocked on? What, what could be a risk? Um, and then the last thing here is for, for folks who use OKRs, you're looking for that measurable outcome uh, and key result. And, and so that sort of slots in to, to the fifth part. Um, it, it is tough to sort of find quantified outcomes of data teams, but uh, that's what you can do. Um, so overall, um, there are enough data PMs. Whatever leadership role you find yourself in, just say what you mean. Uh, last section here, I'm going to talk about uh, finding your want, being an authentic leader um, who, who can express why, why you're doing it, uh, what the impact this is going to have. Um, so um, you, can, you can do this uh, in, in your own sort of self-thinking, self but you also need to do that on behalf of the people on your team who are looking for uh, an answer to the question, what, what am I doing here? Is, is this just a job for me, or am I looking for something more? Um, so uh, are folks working on self-serve analytics? Sort of this is a vision. You want, you want to, to help your organization adopt self-serve analytics. What about, what about self-care? Self-care for the data teams. Um, you, 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 want to, you want to have a chance to make sure that the data team understands itself. Um, and here's, here's an approach that I, uh, I read and, and learned about recently. It's called, it's called Eat the Frog. Uh, when you are finding what is motivating and you want more out of your career, um, you, think about, you think about doing your job well. Um, so when I, when I took my current job, you know, my job was to build the right thing and, and keep the engineering team working well. Um, your day job uh, might be to build dashboards. Your, your day job might be to debug pipelines. And um, you want to do your job well. Uh, and you want to then, if you want uh, more challenges, you want to find the thing that your boss hates doing and do that well. Um, but the trap to avoid is don't do the thing that your boss wants to be doing but wishes that they had more time for. Um, so, uh, if you've got a boss that says, oh, man, I wish I wrote more SQL. I, wait, I, I, I haven't written SQL in a while. I, 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 just want, I just want to get into the data and, you know, you know, we had this meeting and my boss said uh, that, that this number was wrong. I was like, okay, okay, so I can dive into this. I, I should be diving into the SQL more. Well, no, that's your boss. That's your boss's boss. Um, don't. Don't take that as a sign that that's actually what they want you to be doing. That's, that's something they actually would love to be doing, but, but they've got other challenges. They've got blockers uh, in their mind. 
maybe, maybe the tough thing for them is building culture and sort of understanding the team around them. Maybe the tough thing for them is talking with customers and finding um, the right stakeholders to, to get input from. Maybe the tough thing for them is researching new, um, uh, new components to build. You're finding the right people on the team who it, it's got to happen uh, and, and you want to take this over. So, um, but at this point, I'm wondering, this is a little bit of a stretch, I'm wondering if I could get uh, a volunteer from the audience for a quick uh, little, um, little example of, of what you're working on. Someone who's like a tech lead or someone who's you know, deep in, in their team uh, and uh, working on, on a gnarly problem you kind of want to debug. Does this matter to you? Is this, is this important? Someone have Be an shy. Any volunteers? Come on down. Let's get you on the stage. Okay. Howdy, I'm, I'm CJ. Hey, CJ, nice to meet you. Good to meet no, you. Sean. Hey, Sean. Uh, so, 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 what are you, what are you working on? What, what would you be doing if you weren't at this conference? Uh, <laughs> I would be doing exactly like you mentioned, be like eating the frog. Okay. Uh, we recently just went through a transition and. Um, unofficially officially have a new boss. Okay. And so the new director is flattening the org chart and working on um, some new roadmaps and some new visions. Okay. And it's not necessarily that clear. And uh, my job description may be changing. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you more in analytics? Are you more in engineering? Are you more in data science? Uh, at certain times, over the, like recent history, it's all three. Okay. But, um, I am a staff data architect yeah. and also a solutions architect designing a data platform. And I think I'm being moved into focusing primarily on data engineering and infrastructure. Okay, okay. So what's, what's probably gonna be a, a big rock or sort of, what, what, what does leadership wanna make their mark on, on the company with? So big splash, Yeah. Uh, increase revenue, decrease costs, yeah. retain customers. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> Sounds good. Capitalism. Love it. Um, uh, when you, it's 4 p.m. and it, it's the end of the day, what's something that you wish you had more time to do? Uh, I think it's taking, taking business processes and turning them into technical tasks for, you know, the people on our team mm -hmm. uh, to try to conform more towards like a, a centralized analytics hub that could support both analytics and data science. Nice. Um, and also try to understand the, the contention between that and also building a single source of truth in the sense of bringing all the data in the company into one place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, your peer architects as well as your new boss, old boss, so on and so forth, do they understand this challenge? Would they want to be tackling the same stuff? Uh, peers, uh, not, not so many. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> old boss, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, new boss, I'm not sure. Not sure yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah, getting yeah. there. Okay, what's, what's something that you feel like the leadership team always says we should be doing, and they won't, but, but no one actually wants to get done? Uh, you know, resolving technical debt, and yeah. increasing like, like efficiencies yeah. to get better data quality. Mm -hmm. In order, well, the way I look at it is in order to um, drive the, the vision that they have on creating new data products through data science and and different things that they could unlock, unlock with the data. What's, uh, what's one specific thing that you might want to do to uh, make that better? What's, what's the smallest, if you, if you take like a rock around that and you try to make it smaller, what, what's, a, what's a smaller version of that that you actually could tackle and get done? Uh, the smallest piece, uh, just determine the best way to combine two data silos. Oh, yeah, okay, call them out. Two data, data silos, find a way to combine put them, them. Put them together, yeah. Sweet, excellent. Okay. As easy as way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so overall, you're you're in the mix. You're in the mix of of a tough sort of corporate environment, but you yourself have a passion, and you want to share that with the team. The other folks on your team can feel it. Uh, and so if you're authentic with them and open with them, then 
uh, then they, they pick that up from you and they'd be excited to take that on themselves. Um, so, so to recap, um, three hot takes. Uh, check your pebbles. In perf reviews, you want to reward autonomy. Uh, it's okay. You're having a one-on-one -on -one with someone on your team. You want to check on how they're doing, talk about the cats, maybe they're a dog person. Eh, just say what you mean. Say what you mean in terms of what needs to get built uh, and, and what the right thing to do is. Uh, and, and team smell uh, if, if you don't find your want. So uh, I want to encourage folks to be authentic uh, in their relationships. Um, here again is the playbook. A uh, bit more links and, and chat uh, on, on my website.